Hi you guys, it's your girl Amber back again with another video for Amber and the Truth channel and today we're going to be talking about identity theft, the devil's favorite game. Adam and Eve were created perfectly by God and the devil stole their identity. In the same way, the devil steals many believers and unbelievers identities by robbing and stripping them of who God created them to be. The devil's ultimate purpose in his kingdom with his demons and principalities is to steal your identity. This tic-tac-toe type of game is designed to keep a person from the cross, redemption, and salvation. It progresses from taking their purpose and identity to leaving that person just barely surviving. How many of you know people who are barely surviving? It might even be yourself. One of the reasons he's going to send you down to creation through a birthday through a place in time was to fulfill an assignment. Yet somewhere in the hospital room or wherever you were birthed, the devil assigned a demon to your life to steal your identity. Throughout the Bible, we read of the lives of men like King Saul, Samson, Esau, Jonathan, and Judas. These are some of the names of people who allowed the enemy to get the best of them. If we were to discuss the names of people today, whose lives the enemy has hijacked, people whose spiritual identities have been stolen, there would be billions of names. The devil is trying to best to steal our identity and the identity of the church itself. Following are some of the ways he operates or tries to operate in our lives to take our identity. The devil hates human beings because we are made in the image of God and that one thing he hates the most. Also, the reason why he hates us is because we can be redeemed. Angels, well, unclean angels, aka evil spirits, aka demons, sinned once against God and they were kicked out of heaven. We continuously to sin over and over and over again and, and are forgiven by the Father. Well, when we repent and we mean it, that would that is why they're angry. That is why they hate us. That is why they can't stand us. That is why they're attacking us 24 seven because we can be redeemed by God. The devil is okay with so-called families or people who are involved in homosexuality. Men living with men, women living with women. When it's time to do witchcraft on them, the people of evil, the high principalities, they don't have to do witchcraft on them because their family or lack of family is not a family according to God. They don't have to dismantle the family at all because they are already in sin. Another place demons will attack to destroy and bring chaos to your life is through your workplace. Wreaking havoc in this area will break and dismantle your finances and divide and steal your home. The devil also frequently uses the workplace as a place of temptation for adultery and fornication. Encouraging two people to form a relationship or a friendship that escalates into full-blown immorality. The devil will also seek after your health through addictions, drugs, alcohol, diseases, and sicknesses because he knows that your body was created to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. This is another way that he's an identity thief. Your money is another area the devil will attack. Out of control finances will push you to create such a debt factor in your life that it often brings oppression, depression, anger, and resentment and even spirits of suicide into your life. As we know, many today couldn't carry that weight and it has taken the lives of young and old, male and female, from all walks of life. He will also destroy your identity through relationships, through abusive relationships. The devil steals your identity and your self-confidence. He releases a spirit of condemnation on you, a spirit of low self-esteem. It allows a spirit of torment to scorn your mind to the point that you think nothing is left of yourself. He also uses improper relationships to introduce you to spirits of adultery and fornication, wrapping you so tight in a web of immorality that only the power of the Holy Spirit can break it. The tools that the devil uses most often are temptation and deception. Temptation is to make you want to quit and give up on God, and deception is to make you believe that you're never going to come out of your circumstances. One of the greatest things that the enemy does is to cause a person to make a permanent decision based on a temporary situation. I believe we get stuck on the broken parts of our life and sit in those areas for too long. Even though we know that the storms don't last, it's time to get up from the ashes and dust ourselves off from the residue of life. Look the enemy eye to eye and take back our identity. In case you've lost it and can't find it, your identity starts at the cross. Get back to that place where everything begins and ends in Jesus Christ. How easy we make it for the devil to steal our identity. We are all born with a purpose for our lives from the gods of hands. But then the fiery darts of temptation and deception invade our lives. 
I call them spirit bombs, entrapments of the enemy, setups that take our lives in a downward spiral from God's best, which he designed for us before the beginning of time. If you find yourself in these shackles and you notice that you're in these shackles, please, I beg you to grab your Bible, to get on your knees, humble yourself, and to pray them away. Because the great thing about knowing that the, the devil stole your identity is that you can get it back with Jesus Christ. Once you repent and get on your knees and you submit yourself unto God and you command those demons or evil spirits to go or anything that is hindering you from getting to Christ, you command them to go in the name of Jesus. Jesus has gave us that power to be able to do that. You command them to go and they will go in Jesus' name. His name has power. Use it. I want to thank you guys for listening and for watching. If you like and you want more devotionals, hit that like button. If you have something to say, put it in the comments below. And as of always, I will see you and you will see me next time. Bye.